So thanks to my comments, I know that a fair bit of stuff in this video is gonna be inaccurate, maybe debunked. It's the final video in the FNAF Ultimate Timeline series, and I'm very excited to dive into it. I just thought I'd put that disclaimer. I don't really know anything about FNAF lore outside of what I've learned in this series so far. I don't know anything about the books, especially the new books. So while I'm now aware that a lot of it is debunked or outdated, I'm just gonna watch through this video as normal and take it on board as face value, given that I've already watched the other three and I just wanna finish the series. So if I'm taking things seriously and asking questions and you're thinking this isn't even accurate, that would be why that's the perspective I'm coming at this with. So let's go. I am very excited to finish this series. Hello internet. Welcome to game theory and the final part of my FNAF timeline where today <laughs> final, 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 final. By talking about the most complicated and controversial part of the timeline, the part oh. that I've been dreading most of all, the end. At least he's acknowledging that it's controversial. And if he's been dreading it, then I guess he knows that it might be some theory crafting and guessing. Forced to come to some definitive and difficult answers trying to explain what the heck we were watching in Security Breach. <laughs> the last two episodes have been about death. Yeah, lots and lots of death. The death of the franchise itself as Mike and Henry figuratively and literally burn it all down. See, that's what I'm, I guess, confused about and interested to discover is how does it continue after that? They burnt everything. How is there possibly more? And how does William survive? The current end of this franchise is instead all about rebirth, the return of old characters and new yeah. friends, and the controversy. It does seem that way, especially with William Afterness refusing to die. We finally reach the end and a new beginning to our story. Post purple guy. Wasn't William Afton purple guy, so post William Afton? Fazbear Entertainment was dead. There is no need for you okay, to return fully dead. next week as Fazbear Entertainment is no longer a corporate entity. All debts had been paid, all assets redistributed. How did they pay off the debts if everything just got destroyed? The horrors that had happened there started to fade away in the public consciousness. The people were gone too. Sorry, it started to fade away in the public consciousness. Oh yeah, the place that's associated with like a dozen deaths of children. Mm, who's gonna remember that? A whole generation of young Emilys and Aftons had lost their lives to the horrors of the pizzeria. All of them collateral damage to the man in the bunny suit. Yeah, he kind of did just destroy his whole generation. Well, all except one. Pay your one? child support, you deadbeat. What? I'm keeping the diamond ring. I also set the house on fire. Clara Afton. She'd been there in the early- Who the hell's that? Things with William were good. They'd had the perfect home. Oh, wife? But didn't like Michael Afton see his mum in the bunker or something like that? I was wondering what the hell happened to her. But shortly after their youngest son died, things started to change. Okay. William had become distant, lost in his work, obsessive. She had watched him- Yeah, he was never around. Brilliant man that she had fallen in love with to a drunken monster struggling to hold himself together. I already feel so bad for her. Why Is that her? That's a, I don't like that voice. There's more! You could say anything in that voice and I would hate it. For her sake, she had to leave the relationship. And from there, she largely faded into obscurity. Oh. Mystery from William's past. Oh, that's, so that's why she hasn't really been around in these lore videos. She just dipped. Good for her. And that was fine for her. She wanted to leave that part of her life behind. She tried to move forward, never wanting to hear the name Freddie Fazbear again. Oh God, and she would hear all the news about the deaths. As Fazbear Entertainment began to close as a corporate Paperwork. entity, suddenly her mail was flooded with notifications, requests, obligations. She had been there since the beginning. Did she have a stake in the company? And now, as a shareholder and oh, full God. living member this poor of poor woman family, all copyrights and trademarks of both Afton Robotics and Fazbear oh Entertainment my God. passed on to her. Memories of this past life. <sighs> That's just, uh. Can you just imagine wanting nothing more than to move on, put all that behind you, put your drunken, awful, murderous husband in the past, and then suddenly, when you think it's all gone, you start getting leaked legal documentation because now you own everything of his. Hell yeah, moving on is so easy. Looking at the blueprints, the contracts, the memos, she felt- Oh, would she learn everything as well from the blueprints? How much does she know at this point? But he'd also been too blinded by obsession 
pride. He was too jealous, too petty, too unable to actually see a bigger picture. I hadn't even thought about how there's this huge bigger picture there because yeah, all the stuff he's done and discovered is amazing. But also, are we just overlooking the fact that he literally found a way to like bind souls to things or at least found out that that's possible? Like the implications of consciousness and the afterlife are huge and he just did nothing with it. Just started using it to murder. Imagine the ridiculous developments that could happen if Remnant was discovered by the scientific community at large. She realized it was her turn. She was holding the power. This was her chance. Oh, and God. one Is she gonna go off the deep end too? Head. I will put them back together. I will put them all back together. What? She Why? be the one to rebuild this family. Some things can stay destroyed. Looking at William's work now laid out before her, she knew that he had been onto something. Collecting remnant, robotic humanoids, digital conscience transference. The pieces were all in place. Okay. They just scattered, fragmented. How much of a scientist is she? It was such an important idea that she reiterated that point to herself. There were too many ideas going in too many different directions. That said, there- What is she gonna to save it hone all. in she on? She just needed to put it all back together. But how? To rebuild her family, she would first need to rebuild the franchise that it's- Why? Just- why, what? I understand it's like a thematic point, but my god. Some people just need to like, leave things in the past. I understand she wants to rebuild her family, but if she's aware of the things that William did, maybe at least leave that. She converted the corporation back to an LLC, a structure for smaller businesses that are usually family owned. <sighs> The irony was fitting. From there, she would need remnant and lots of it. So she is able to just do this stuff apparently. William had been using Circus Babies Entertainment and Rentals as a remnant farm, sending robots to kids' birthday parties in the hopes of nabbing bits God. of the stuff here and there. But clearly it wasn't enough. Just, what is this woman now okay with? Like, is she aware that he got the remnant by sending these animatronics out to kids' birthday parties? Like, she's aware that William ripped apart the family by pursuing this line, and then now in order to put the family back together, she's continuing this line of thinking? It was a decent idea, but to get the remnant they required, it needed scale. Dozens, hundreds of am- So now she's just gonna, what, attack m more kids? But to do that would require help, something William would never ask for. William had kept everything in-house. So she's like scaling up the evil to kidnap it and torture more children? So she contacted a mid-sized delivery company, DLZ Shipping Solutions, to help build replicas oh of all the- Oh my god, dude, no, so that's mess. Delivery apps being all the rage, why not an animatronic delivery service? Order one to celebrate your birthday, your Halloween party. How about a 4th of July picnic? I mean, damn, where was this business mind back in the day? Chocolate Bonnies for Easter, Shamrock Freddy's for St. Patrick's, <laughs> Day, Dia de las Muertos Chicas. God, and thus, those are Fazbear horrifying. I don't like the St. Patrick's Day one at all. The Fazbear Funtime service was born. That's right. With the Fazbear Funtime Mark service, Plow? you'll never be alone. <laughs> Hell yeah. Always have someone watching your back. Even with the creepy glitches, just because of Markiplier, I'd buy the service. Was it a sellout? No doubt. It was exactly the sort of thing that William would have hated, but it needed to be done to get enough remnant. Which, just to clarify, is by extracting souls from children, right? That's still the way they get remnants. So now, at a larger scale, she is stealing children's souls via Scooping? <laughs> but with new skins for new holidays, suddenly you had yourself an animatronic perfect for every occasion. It would keep people okay. hooked. It would keep them ordering the latest and greatest that Fazbear Entertainment LLC had to offer. And all the while, they'd be collecting and returning the remnant back to her. In a word, it was brilliant. And horrifying. No one trusted the Fazbear name. Good. These they shouldn't. Still they still shouldn't. shouldn't. No one would want to hire animatronics from the restaurant franchise known for murdering children. <laughs> party quite like the threat of death, you know? So, she needed to find a way to discredit the stories that had come before. Oh, no. is she just gonna like gaslight the public? No, 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 none of that happened. What are you talking about? She needed a game. Multiple games, in fact. They lied to us. Games. They lied to all the of FNAF us. games. They told us that the whole point of this VR game was to undo the bad PR done by a rogue indie game developer. What? But that's not true at all. Those indie games were designed to conceal and make light of what happened. This isn't just an attempt to rebrand. It's an elaborate cover-up. Huh? <sighs> so they're making a game in order to make it seem like all the stories of child death are just like 
Folklore? I don't feel like that would work, you know? If an indie game developer just took some renowned serial killer, like, like, like Charles Manson, and then just made a Charles Manson game series. I don't think the public would go, oh yeah, 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 no, yeah, Charles Manson. The fake story from the video game, people would know that that was real. It's documented. So she found one. Steve just picked him out of obscurity. Yeah, Steve. He fell right in line, as expected, delivering stupid little things with dumb generic names like Mangle's Quest, Balloon Boy's Air Adventure, Five Nights at Freddy's, <laughs> bad gameplay with even worse graphics. So canonically in the game, Five Nights at Freddy's is a game. So they made the game in the game lore in order to cover up the deaths. So that would mean that FNAF is set in our universe then. People were suddenly talking about the clues inside of these things, searching for the hidden lore. They were actively making jokes about dead kids at pizzerias. Yeah, I can't imagine doing that. I've never done that. <laughs> the plan had worked. Freddy Fazbear's was suddenly more popular than ever. Things were going shockingly well. Does she not feel awful for this? I was on her side at the start. Like, yeah, you know, justice for her. She's been through so much. Turns out, she's also just evil. Suddenly infused with cash, she built the largest, most ambitious project yet. The Mega Pizza Place. I was gonna say a theme park. <laughs> so visionary, but always thought so small scale. He was careful to a fault. Not her though. She knew that this latest oh my project God. needed to be big. It needed to be flashy. It needed to be a palace for children. A place that got people talking and checking out the latest in Fazbear products. So with a steady supply of remnant flowing in. So she's using the money that she got from covering up the the murders of children and actively harvesting the souls, I think, of children to then make a fun time palace where kids can come and see the things that are gonna steal their souls. The stage was set. It was time to get to her real goal, literally rebuilding a family. So she's... Uh, how though? They won't be really them, right? She'd seen down in his bunker that William had gotten very close to replicating artificial humans using animatronic technology. And so that's exactly what she would do. Rebuild her boy from the ground up using robotic parts. His shaggy brown hair, his favorite... But how would she get his, his personality? Would notice, like the band-aid on his left knee. William's research had even found ways of making animatronics that could bleed and process food, making them oh virtually God. indistinguishable from a typical human. This man, again, has achieved the impossible and unachievable and kept it to himself. Didn't use that to like further humanity. Just no, 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 that's cool. I and I alone can develop artificial intelligence, change consciousnesses, and also just create humans. Suck it, science. The only things that could possibly ruin the illusion were any overrides to his internal systems. If something were to say, interfere with the cameras that he had in his eyes, or cause okay. some sort of a core reboot to his hard drive, or x-ray his metallic bones, then yeah, he would be exposed. But otherwise, to the outside world, he was just your typical... And how are you gonna explain your child just coming back and also never aging, I assume? But it was one thing to build him, it was another to help him remember his identity. He died so young, so early in their history that there was no preserved memories for him. Yeah, where's the soul? So bit by bit, she trained him, forcing him to remember who he was. Does she know that, isn't his soul in like, Golden Freddy was it or something? Are we about to learn that somehow she's able to extract those souls? She even made a makeshift dinner table, a reminder of their happy That days. is just terrifying on Always. At first, he could only communicate through simple ones and zeros, then rudimentary drawings and crude letters. But bit by bit, images of his past- I love that he drew pizza. I mean, it's a pizzeria. He drew pizza and went, yum. Me like pizza. I shouldn't be finding these nightmarish things cute, and yet here I am. Balloons, colors, houses, bears, and faces, birthday parties, all for me. All for Gregory me. was alive. That sounds ominous. This was the joy that she'd been working towards. This was what it was all for, her son. Okay, I still do feel bad for her, but my God, you are still being evil. Next was William. If the family was truly gonna be put together, she would need him. Why? She knows what he is. In the ruins of that old Freddy Fazbear's pizza place where Henry had trapped him. In fact, that's specifically why she insisted on building the pizza plex there over the sinkhole. Oh my God, she built it over there to get him from what, Springlock or whatever? He was right where she thought he'd 
be. Seeing the putrid shell of the Springtrap suit, though, horrifying. Not something she was prepared for. The rotting corpse of William Afton was disgusting. I was gonna say, why is it the corpse? I forgot that, like, he literally died inside the suit and has been there in a horrific death. Is he still alive, though? He just seems to have the willpower to never die. Is she just gonna get horrified by the fact that, oh my god, after all this time, this awful, decrepit corpse is still alive? Somehow. Hollow black sockets where God. eyes once were. A smell that reeked of burned carbon and bloody iron. He was no longer flesh. He was just the tangled sinews of a creature that was once called human. What a Far fate. This brilliant man had fallen. This brilliant psychopathic child murderer. And his body would need a lot of reconstruction. Replacement arms and endoskeleton reinforcements oh were God, the top priority. Trying to rebuild his literal skeleton inside the suit. Spare body parts lying around that they could steal. In the Sorry. Meantime, though, she... Spare body parts? You'd have to see if they had any spare body parts lying around that they could steal. In the meantime, though, she. Bonnie. Bonnie. I was like, body parts? Does she just have a constant supply of various body parts in case she needs to reassemble a human? That was once her husband into a life support pod infused with aerosolized remnant to help keep him stable. Jesus. But more important than- And what kind of life is that gonna be for him anyway? Severe brain damage starts at temperatures over 108 degrees Fahrenheit. 42 degrees Celsius, and years of repeated fires had burned his brain to goo. Yeah, also, it's been like 30 years. But she had a plan. Unlike her darling boy Gregory, Afton had found ways to record his consciousness. In the circuit board that managed to survive the fire. One thing she knew about William, he was nothing if not cautious. A planner, someone who had backup he plans to his- literally life. backed himself up? Fair enough, there it was. Buried in piles of old animatronic CPUs, <laughs> a record of Afton himself but she needed someone to test it. Someone was definitely here during the night. Someone to test it? What does that, what, what does that mean? She just gonna, <laughs> is she just gonna like insert that into someone's brain or like into a different animatronic just to see what happens? I mean, they sent us that stuff in the first place with no explanation, told us to scan it, said it would expedite the process so we wouldn't need to program any pathfinding ourselves. Unlike the other games that she'd paid to have made in the past. Oh, she's putting it in the game. That's smart. Spreading his virus to the masses. You acknowledge oh. that Fazbear Entertainment they is not responsible for accidental digital consciousness transference. Real world manifest. So they're literally like trying to install William on people's computers. <laughs> what? This is getting insane. And because of the immersive nature of VR, William's consciousness would be able to merge with the player. Hello? A new, body, a new agent. In the VR games too. Afton's hold wasn't as powerful as she had hoped. He wasn't able to gain complete control. Well, why would he be able to? The people playing aren't coded. Afton's followers were reluctant, to say the least. But it was the second attempt that looked like it had the potential to kill two birds with one stone. Enter oh. Vanessa. Mrs. Afton and wanted a surrogate daughter. Her darling Elizabeth would have been a young woman at this point. Is she bringing someone else on board because they remind her of her daughter? She decided against it because she wanted an actual human mother-daughter connection. Oh, okay, so like human robot mother-son connection. That's fine, mother-daughter? No, only human. What could she say? William had put a lot of tools on the table for her to use and she was planning on using them all. Plus, Elizabeth had always been so loyal to daddy. It was time to give her a second chance, a true choice. And Vanessa what? seemed to be the perfect candidate to fill the role. Your dad's name was Bill. Your dad didn't play fair. She's not gonna do something to Vanessa, right? He manipulated you. I know oh your mom. God. I don't even want to. She lost the custody. I don't even want to know. She started as a QA tester at Silver Parasol Games, a VR game development company that was part of her plan to bring back William. But more importantly, Vanessa checked all the correct boxes. Uh, right age, uh, blonde, green eyes, with yeah. fondness for flowers. Is she, she's gonna somehow try to put her dead daughter's consciousness in this poor unsuspecting girl, right? In many ways, it was her daughter all over again. Except it wasn't just looks and personality. So like, just get to know her as a person. You don't have to like literally turn her into your daughter to have a good relationship. Underconfident, coming from a broken home, motherless, able to be manipulated. She's even like, oh, she's, she's 
motherless, so like have a surrogate relationship. Like you don't have to literally be her mother. I swear to God. I will make you proud, Daddy. Well, testing the VR game, Williams. Oh, or is William gonna? Vanessa. Okay, she cool. Thought... William's gonna just invade her mind. Trying to do web searches to regain control over her life, but it wasn't enough. She was weaker than Jeremy. She was a thrall that what the sh man of lucidity had to obey. And with Vanessa, it was a two for one deal. She was getting a daughter back while also bringing her husband one step closer to reactivation. How does William being in her consciousness help though? Clara had him keeping tabs on Vanessa, hacking into her emails and trailing her therapy sessions to ensure the future Elizabeth was falling in line. If any of the therapists started to ask too many questions, they were promptly dismissed from their Dis positions. And while Greg killed? Is that was that the implication? God, this woman is like how why does this just feel what I I don't know it's the scale there's so much that she's doing that's just evil Mrs. Afton made sure to clear a path for her professionally with silver parasols collapse at the hands of the anomaly she then had the possessed Vanessa bring the contaminated circuit boards to DLZ shipping oh god so they can ship them out to the uh. She's just infecting everything with William. She brought Vanessa over to be chief security officer at the Pizzaplex. A true family tradition to <laughs> don the hat and badge. And all it took was a recommendation from the top as well as some emails marked for deletion. Sure, Vanessa didn't have relevant experience for the job, but when it comes directly from the CEO, does it really matter? Husband, son, daughter. A corpse, a robot, a human. All that was left was Michael. Oh yeah, and he's still just like a bag of rotting flesh. Is she gonna find find actual him and how would she fix him or is she just gonna recreate him too well she knew she needed him to complete the family something told her that the problem had already solved itself oh yeah because he's dead shifted when you forgot about that ready to excavate the buried pizza place i have been here before i found myself for the first time when i cleared the path i have changed my friends are here did he end up getting into it an animatronic too? Everybody can be an animatronic. Maybe it was the spirit of Michael living on as a protector, but he was there, somewhere inside of Glamrock Freddy. She could feel it. So and that's that, Michael. Oh my god. There were still some kinks to work out, some final brainwashing of Vanessa, some rehabilitation of William. Is this really a victory for her? The Afton's reunited. A happy ending. And that's how it could have ended. Hmm. That's how it should have ended. Had it not been for a few unanticipated developments. Hate that visual. For one, a lot. something was just wrong with the pizza plex. Almost as if the entire building was haunted. Oh, gee, could it be all of the troubled souls that got burnt? Could it be the demon that is William Afton dying in that area? Oh, I wonder what could possibly be making the place seem not right. Hmm, a dozen dead children, a psychopathic murderer, and then Michael, all perishing, all their souls being destroyed. Hmm, truly a mystery what marked that place. Puppet plushies hiding on ceilings, behind oh, crates, oh, places no. that they had no earthly way of belonging. Staff Do not bots, like that. Greasy tears down their eyes, acting like they were being puppeteered by some sort of a nightmare. Even their sounds had the echo of nightmares long past. So... All of the stuff got like demon haunted or something? It was as though a guardian spirit of the past refused to move on. As long as her husband right. was around, it too would linger. Only now, it wasn't just in one body, but it was in the essence of the building Oh itself. my god, hell yeah. The puppet can get William. <laughs> never assumed that it could be real. Then again, in a world of living spirit metal and mind controlling glitches. I was gonna say, how would you be like, oh, hmm, crazy that the haunting happened. I can't believe that that would even exist. Bro, you are like f***ing with consciousness and souls. Ghost is like way down on the list there. The whole thing was ridiculous. Why would this be the line that she refused to cross? After all, the pizza plex was built over the burial ground of angry spirits. Yeah, that's what I've been saying. Suddenly these cords were striped black and white, like the the security puppet from Generation. Oh. Is the security puppet good though? I feel like it's meant to be. It's like a guardian, right? And it was being helped by something else. Something slithering through the building. Maybe they were connected. She couldn't be sure. But a blob of living wires could be heard oozing through the walls, stealing pieces and parts of the old animatronics oh. showcased in Rockstar Row. Are these entities working against her? Because in my mind, she's like straight up evil right now, like full villain. So if the security puppet and these wires Wires are trying to stop her, then they're the good guys, right? Even if they look freaky and terrifying. From Afton's testing, she knew that both light and dark remnant existed. One what? positive emotions and the other created from anguish. Right, 
anger. How do you make positive remnant, though? This thing was an amalgamation of all the darkest parts of the pizzeria's history. God. A collection of the hatred still housed inside these defunct endoskeletons and exosuits. As long as it was left alone, it seemed to be harmless. But if any Afton outside of Michael got too close, it would laugh. Aw, I like that it still likes Michael. I'm guessing that this entity is fine with Michael because Michael died in the fire too, and it probably knows what he was trying to do and that he was trying to fix things. Little did she know though that Gregory should have been her biggest concern. That really? bringing the family together would have some unforeseen consequences. Gregory was normally the goodest of boys. She had literally built him that way. But lately, he'd been disappearing more and more often, disobeying her orders. <laughs> requests. Yeah, I guess if he's just like a robot, essentially, wouldn't he be susceptible to interference and influence from these other things? She suspected his absence had to do with Glamrock Freddy's failed performance the other night, when he malfunctioned live on stage, almost as though the core programming of Freddy responded to seeing this rebuilt small boy. Almost what? like it awakened something inside of him. Inside of Glamrock Freddy, or? Whether it was the influence of the nightmare puppet, or a reawakened hatred of animatronics seated deep in Gregory's code, oh, something God. had caused him to rebel. To rip apart each animatronic in the Pizzaplex, bit by bit. Is that a good thing, though? As her carefully created world crumbled around her one more time, she began to plot her revenge. She would have to bring revenge against all to ruin. All of them? Have it, my friends, nearly a decade in the making, my FNAF timeline. Okay, so why would she have to destroy all- I guess because they're all conspiring against her at this point? As always, it wouldn't be right for me to finish without going over some of the more controversial takes that I just handed out. Give them to me. First of all, the biggest swing of this episode, and obviously the one that everything else rests upon Mrs. Afton being the CEO of Fazbear Entertainment. It L makes sense that that would happen, but... This route. Now, first and foremost, the head of Fazbear Entertainment is the single biggest mystery that we're meant to solve at this point in the lore. Right. The ultimate guide brings it up repeatedly. Who's running the show? Who is okaying these decisions? And in the security breach memos, we get multiple mentions of someone manipulating things from the top down. Mm. Whoever this is, they are the person driving forward every other facet of late stage FNAF lore here. Personally, I can't think of someone else that it would make sense for it to be. I guess it could just be some random person that like bought all the rights or something. But it would make a lot of sense if she was involved from the start. Now as I see it, there are two possibilities here. One, an adult robot Elizabeth, like we see older versions of robot kids in the fourth closet, or Mrs. Afton. Could it be someone completely new to the franchise? Absolutely yes, but it just wouldn't be narratively right, right? So between these two girl bosses, who then would it be? Well, Elizabeth always wants to please her daddy, so she'd be most likely wanting to bring him to life. But then what's Vanessa's role in all of this? Mm. Vanessa is clearly meant to be a parallel for Elizabeth. Same hair, same eyes, similar backstories. But if the main goal is getting the Afton family back together, which seems to clearly be the case in Security Breach, then there's no need for Vanessa to be involved at all. We already have Elizabeth running the show. I mean, that makes sense as a conclusion to me. Now look at Mrs. Afton. We know next to nothing about her outside of any clues that we can get from Immortal and the Restless and Ballora's song. Also, like, her life was kind of destroyed and uprooted, so I can imagine that she'd be wanting to rebuild it all like this because what she went through can just destroy a person what her being head of fazbear does is make every other piece of the lore fit suddenly you can have one of every other type of character one robot kid in gregory one right. brainwashed human in elizabeth slash vanessa one og corpse in william and one possessed animatronic in mike as well as an evil human legally it's also the option that makes the most sense as i call out in my narrative she'd likely have some stake in the original company and all of its assets so as fazbear folds as as a company, I'd suspect a lot of it would return back to her. But there was one clue that really sold me on this particular Tell me. And that was this right here. In the post- What am I looking at? The big lore central of Security Breach, a dinner table scene with the whole- Oh, that's what he was referring to before. The position of highest honor and responsibility. She is the one in charge. I thought this was just a graphic he made for the video. It makes a lot more sense if this is in one of the games. William being relegated off to the side. That one scene shows that we have have to include mom in there somewhere and the only place it makes sense for her to be is at the top. Now there is one big dilemma with my interpretation of all this. The ultimate guide really seems to point out that the head of Fazbear doesn't want the glitch trap virus to spread. They call out one particular right. email in FNAF AR where the legal team calls a cease and desist to all action about scanning the circuit boards. And even in FNAF VR, oh. we're told that the circuit boards get stolen back by the client, presumably once they realize what danger is on there. This is William, right? Here's the problem with that though. If the head of Faz 
Fazbear doesn't want Afton to rise again, why'd they restart the company in the first place? Why'd they build over the FNAF 6 pizzeria? Why'd they go through an elaborate cover-up to make the possessed Vanessa an important part of the company? Just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It would be the most inconsistent series of actions ever, but I did want to call attention to it since it seems to be the route that the official guide is trying to steer us towards. So as I said at the start of the video, I know that the recent books have kind of debunked a lot of this, and I'm guessing a lot of it has to do with that point just then, because to me, that seems like a big hole in the theory. I guess there are ways that you could explain it away, but I'm wondering if that's where a lot of this falls down. So let me know down below in the comments. The Five Nights at Freddy's games were made by the rogue indie developer. Here's the thing, FNAF VR opens with this line. That's why we have recreated many of these completely fictitious scenarios, lies mm -hmm. that you've been fed over the last several years into a hilarious VR game. That is such an obvious, like, lie, though. If I heard that in a game and I'd previously heard the stories, I'd be like, oh, it's a cover-up. <laughs> and since Help Wanted has direct recreations of FNAFs 1 through 3, it means the games must be part of the fabrications that this developer made up. Also, all of this is heavily implied in the story of the same name, Help Wanted and Tales of the Pizzaplex, hence FNAF 1 through 3 canon games within the lore of the series. That's so it's weird. The elephant, or ghost in the room, Charlie and Affecting the Pizzaplex. John from the channel FNAF has made some great findings about Charlie's influence over the Pizzaplex. The cables that looked like the striped arms of the puppet, the nightmare own plushies that you find hidden across the Pizzaplex. Does she have something to do with them? Joined forces with the security puppet. Plus, with the puppet mask not having tears in the blob seems to imply that Charlie's spirit exists elsewhere. She is still in play, and she has an important role, especially in Gregory's post-it room. The doors to the post-it room in the game's code are called Charlie doors. Oh, and what if she is possessed? Possessed the building. The channel ID Fantasy did a great theory looking at the post-it notes, concluding that the crying child slash Gregory isn't alone in this room, but rather might be communicating with someone. A spirit, Charlie. I'm just saying, maybe the house. We've seen spirits communicating with people through physical writing in the survival logbook. So we know that this is an established means of spirit communication with okay. this franchise. And I suspect that to some extent it might be Charlie's influence. I was gonna say that might be how she made Charlie him act out. My final and probably biggest controversy in recent FNAF history, Gregory as Patient 46. The what is Patient 46? In GGY, we find out about a boy named Gregory who's getting all the high scores in the Pizzaplex arcade right. machines. When therapists start to go missing, it's confirmed that GGY is the one that's working to bump GGY, off. GGY, Gregory, makes sense. Corrupted by a mysterious glitch, GGY's letters are found inside the code. He even chooses the code name Dr. Rabbit for crying out loud. But obviously, by the time a security breach, Gregory is working against Burn trap Vanessa and the animatronics. Why? How? Well, it's not really clear. I tend to believe that something must have happened to cause him to either lose his memory or be reset. I'm pretty on board with the other entities like manipulating Gregory and making him fight against his mom. That also narratively makes sense. Connection that he made with Mike on stage in Glamrock Freddy. Not exactly sure and I don't think we have enough clues to solve any of it yet. I just realized how messed up it is that Michael ended up being in a version of Freddy. Especially after he saw his own brother that died in a Freddy's jaw while he was possessing a Freddy. Oh, that would mess with you. And with that, my friends, I'm wrapping this thing up. Congratulations. Oh my gosh. 40, 22,000 words of FNAF, baby. That is an effort, man. Have I answered everything? No. Does everything fit cleanly? No. But does it feel like the best and most cohesive <laughs> narrative for all these characters that addresses most of the evidence we're given? Yeah. For me, honestly, it really does. And let's be honest with ourselves, the DLC will probably come out later this year and prove me completely <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what happened. But regardless, I am so proud of this. This was a massive undertaking. And I'm so proud of our editors who have just destroyed the editing. Hell yeah, project. everyone killed it. Thank you for pushing through on 20 plus minute uploads. You are unreal and your talent is unrivaled. I'm so lucky to work with you guys every single That's time. That's so sweet. I love that shout out. And with that, my friends, we can finally rest. I can leave the demon to its demons with one <laughs> final reminder that it was all just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for for what? Oh, I need to just breathe a big sigh because my God, that was a lot. I'm still left with a bunch of questions. I'm also so curious what exactly was proven wrong and what was proven to be correct in the games. Like what are the actual sequence of events? Who did all that? Why did Gregory switch? There are so many questions I have and I'm hoping, I'm praying that y'all down in the comments can answer them for me. Or I guess point me to another lore video I can watch that's updated and explains everything. I feel good and complete now that we've finished 
finish this series though. What an experience it's been and regardless of what's right and what's wrong, it was still a Herculean effort from MatPat. I'm impressed and thankful the content exists because oh my god was it just such a unique experience diving into all of this. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, I really appreciate you being here and I'll see you next time.